Welcome to the latest tutorial in the series of calculating surface area and today what we're looking at is the surface area of a rectangular prism using the net of the prism. Now what you can see we've got, we've got our rectangular prism but what we need to be able to do is visualize what it looks like when we unfold it into its net. So we're using this program called GeoGebra to help us do that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly unfold the net and what you can see the six faces lay out and fold flat. Now it's not very clear but if we rotate the shape a little bit what we can see is that those faces lay out nice and flat like that and we can see that what we've got here are two of the side faces or the ends we've got the other two side faces and we've got the bottom and the top so let's see what happens when we fold it back up you can see that nicely fold back up and if we rotate it around okay you can see that now it's three dimensional and what we'll do is we'll see if we can unfold that into a nice two dimensional flat shape and what we can do now is we can put the dimensions on there so that we can work out the area of the rectangular prism. So now what we need on our rectangular prism are some dimensions. So what we'll have will have a base of 7 centimeters by 10 centimeters and we might give it a height of 5 centimeters. Now obviously this isn't drawn to scale but what we've done is we've selected the numbers so that the area calculations work out nicely. Now so what we need to do is we need to be able to transfer those dimensions onto our net. Now what you can see is the width of our base is 10 centimeters across and remember this is our base here so its width is 10 centimeters and what you'll notice is that each of these edges or well, they're lines on our net but they used to be edges of our solid are all the same length so what we might do is we might mark them all as 10 centimeters so we'll put one line to decorate each one of those now the next will be the height of our prism now the height of our prism is this measurement here and that's 5 now remember that goes up there 5 if that comes up there 5 this end face folds up to meet the side face so all of these edges here are all five centimeters and we probably should use two lines because we've already used one so that's two that's two we've got five centimeters there five centimeters there five centimeters there and five centimeters there the other measurement that we've got is the width of the base is seven centimeters so that's this measurement here seven centimeters and you can see that all of these measurements are all the same. Now the next stage in the process of calculating the surface area is really to forget that we've got a three-dimensional prism down here and now just calculate sorry now just concentrate on calculating the area of our net and what we notice we can divide our net up into one nice long rectangle and two smaller rectangles on the side that are the same size as each other or they're congruent. So what we'll do the first thing is we'll outline the rectangles on the side. So these two rectangles are the same size. They're five centimeters across and seven centimeters up. And this one is five by seven. The next rank rectangle is the large rectangle in the middle. And what we need to do then is figure out what the dimensions of that rectangle are. So we know that it's 10 centimeters across, but what is its total length? Well, we know that that's 5, so this has to be 5 here. We know that's 7. Again, we've got a 5, and we've got another 7. So when we add those two together, we've got 5 and 7 makes 12 another 5 and 7 so all together the overall length of our net is 12 centimeters so the first thing that we're going to calculate 
is the area of these two rectangles here. So we can see that the length of the rectangle is 7, the breadth of the rectangle is 5, so for one of the rectangles its area will be 7 by 5, but we've got two of them, so what we need to do is we need to double that answer. We know that 7 fives are 35, double 35 we end up with 70 square centimetres. And what we'll do is we'll call that A1, which is the area of the two end faces, which correspond to these two faces here, the one on this end and the one on the other end. The next section that we're going to do, we're going to call it area number two, and that's this central rectangle down the middle. We've already worked out that it's 10 centimetres across and 12 centimetres down, and we'll call that area number two, which is 10 centimetres by 12 centimetres, which is 120 square centimetres. And what that's giving us is the area of all of these faces all around. So we've got the top, the front, the bottom that you can't see, and the one at the back that you can't see, these four faces here. Then to get the total surface area of our prism, we simply take our 70 and our 120, add them together, and we'll end up with 190 square centimetres. So therefore, the surface area of our rectangular prism is 190 square centimetres. Okay, let's just quickly recap the steps that we took to calculate the surface area of our prism. First thing, we constructed the net of the prism, then we took the dimensions of the prism off the solid and put them in the correct places on the net, then we divided the net up into simple areas that we could do, and in this case we had simple rectangles, then we calculated the area of each rectangle or each part of the net, then we summed each of the areas together to find the total surface area. So there you have it, that's how we calculate the surface area of a rectangular prism.